Welcome to Believer's Faith Embassy. By believing in Jesus to overcome both Satan and sin. Honor the leadership of Pastor Hezekiah Amos Orengo. Where we have biblical teachings. Have we met Bishop to me? Ability of your mind. Have a clear picture of whatever God wants you to achieve. Praise, worship, and prayers. You cannot be using grace to disgrace God. And Paul says, if then grace has taken away the place of law to give us a better relationship with God, should we therefore seek to dominate sin? Prepare your heart as the service begins. Please be seated, every one of us, and God bless you in Jesus' name. Father, as we receive this word, let it become so real to each of the listeners. Let the word of God come alive in our situations. And let there be the change needed for us to move forward in life, for us to be healed, for us to go to the place of ordained for us to be, for us to get the man we are looking for, for us to marry the right person, for us to have our children go the right way they should go. Father, we thank for the word you are bringing away this morning. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Please be seated. Uh, keys to moving forward, part four. Keys to moving forward, part four. We have had a good opportunity to listen to three keys, and one of them was vision. The ability to discover. When you discover the purpose and the plan of God for your life, you move forward in life. You discover it, and uh, you discover it when you attempt to do whatever he tells you to do, then you begin to see God move you to the next level of your life. Number two, we say it is courage. It takes courage to move God's agenda in your life, for your life forward. It takes courage to believe God. It takes courage to obey God. It takes courage to repent. It takes courage to do whatever you are supposed to do to move forward. Yesterday we looked at the impact of lives. When you impact lives, you move forward. Today, I want to look at what I've titled uh, obedience. Moving forward demands a great understanding and practice of obedience. The obedience of faith is necessary for you to move forward. In the midst of crisis, our emphasis has been that we move forward, especially out of crisis. It is kind of wisdom for hard times that you need to engage in order for you to move forward. Without doubt, Israel was in a very difficult situation. Maybe more difficult than what you think you are in now. And in that difficult situation, there was the impending invading army of the Egyptian elite forces and there was the Red Sea before them. And so they were crying to show you how bad it was. Men in the press of their women, their wives, their mothers, their sisters, their brothers, their children, their grandchildren, everybody. The, 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 the situation was so bad, you can't claim I'm a man enough not to cry. Interestingly, their cry did not move God. It was meaningless to God. Because God wanted again and again, and till date, to prove his Adonai, the big boss. There's a prayer we like to make it here. Father, prove again to this devil and situation my life that you are the boss. You are in charge. You are the big boss. Prove again. Prove again that, Lord, you are boss over this sickness, cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure, all this asthma, all this prostate gland enlargement, all this headache that cannot go. Prove again that the Lord, you are the same boss over demons. And you know how that day that Joshua, you know, kind of touched God. and said, God, are you not the one who cleared all these nations before us? And is it not that in your hand there's power and might, and none can withstand thee? Therefore, judge them. And God said, That is right. I am the boss, I'm in charge, I'm the God and ruler and reign over all the heathen. 
and by all means, I will deal with them. And he said, ah, for what you've said, that is all right. This battle is no longer your business. Don't mind them. It's a matter of men that have come against you. Those of Mount Seir, Moabites, and Ammonites. But I will take over and deal with the situation. Amen? And so, the big God, Adonai, the big boss, came with a very contrary statement. He said, move forward. Amen? Obedience is such an important thing in the life of every Christian. And it determines our relationship with one another and with God. Amen? Move forward in the midst of the crisis. Can't you see the army? You know, an essence of obedience is to make sure you are so a disciplined believer, you will not ask good questions. Many problems emanate in people asking God questions instead of acting on the instructions. Many of us are asking God questions instead of acting on instructions. So we will never see moving forward happen because it is in acting on the instructions that commits God to perform. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And you should, I, I want to introduce you to the God of the Bible. I've always thought people carry their own gods. When you hear a man say, even God understands that I can't do that. Even God understands that I can't pay my tithes. He knows the school fees, the rent, the upkeep, the loans I have. He understands. So how can I be giving him a tithe? He understands. That kind of God is not the one that's in the Bible. I have every, be I have total belief, faith and confidence and assurance. That can never be the Bible God. Because the kind of God that we have in the Bible is the one that tells Israel to move forward in the Red Sea. Re Nobody has ever done it before. There was no logic. There was no reason. And you should know, by the way, the, when that Jacob has been coming from, the same place they're going, they are going to the place that Jacob came from. Okay? Amen? And so they, they never went to the Red Sea. So meaning there are other ways to go to their place. And it was 11 days journey. So this one of going through the Red Sea would be wasting time. <laughs> Amen? But he said, move forward, go to the Red Sea. And when they obeyed, listen, the beauty about obedience is that when they obeyed, three things happened. One, he went before them and cleared the Red Sea. Two, he transformed them. He went with them. He entered their lives. Now he's been working with Moses alone. Now everybody became a prophet. The Bible says, Later in Psalms 107, the Bible says, when there were few moving from one nation to another, he rebuked him for their sakes, saying, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. They became prophets. They became anointed. What does anointed mean? To rub on. They, 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 were, they, they, they received the rubbing on of the presence of God in that obedience. And they went to the, that water. They became such, you know, people with an encounter. And that's why I always thought, if this same country, this same nation, went through and God said, come through Egypt again. And they came through. Egypt will fall like everybody else. Because there's some change that happens every time you walk in obedience. It happened to them. That God's presence now came, not only that to, to open the Red Sea, but God became, came to be with them. Amen. Now, 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 before I proceed on that particular explanation, look at what the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 22, day 28. There's a, st there's a statement there. Something comes upon, not just, not just happens for. Though the third thing should be that then God began to fight for them. Amen? Okay, it is that 14, 14 of Exodus that is easy to imagine. He meant I'll, he will fight for you, the Egyptians. No. Every other enemy, including the Amalekites, Hivites, and all those ites, the Amorites. Now, in chapter 28, the Bible says, And all these blessings shall come on thee, amen, and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. They shall come on you. So, now, the blessing, of course, also means anointing. Now, what happened is that the presence of God came on them, sat on them. The presence of God 
came on them. This on them that he's talking about here. On them. And then number three, he acted on their behalf. Glory to God. Yes. By obedience, you commit God to lead you. To come on you. And to act on your behalf. There's a way that can, somebody can tell you. From this place to Del Monte. Go this way, then go that way, and then go that other side. Yeah. So how, what do you mean? Go to BAT, then that road. Go like that. But it, it's quite something different. When somebody comes, come, let's do this. I want to ride with you in your car. Or go before you with my car. Or go before you in whichever way that you just follow me now. And I will be taking you. That's what God did. When you obey, God is excited. No wonder he says, without faith, you cannot place him. So he's delighted. When we obey, whatever he tells us, and the three things are important in everybody's life. One, he will guide you like I'm saying. He will take his car and begin to lead you. Come from this place. Go to Broadway's, turn on the right, go to uh, engine, pass by engine, go to the bush shed, pass by Polisac, then go to uh, the, uh, at BAT, then your turn. Go by, pass the, the, the winner's chapel on the right there, go down, get to the river, climb up, go pass uh, two, three bumps, you see Canary, and that is the motor headquarter. You, 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 you'll be so comfortable. You know, to imagine, oh, I'm hearing this thing for the first time. Okay. They say, what do they say? When we reach at um, the school here, where do we go? They say right, right. No, did they say right here or left here? No, left will turn the other side. You'll be arguing and wasting time, delays. And the most crucial thing, that when you obey God, you have contracted his presence in your life at that time. Amen. And so it was so advantageous and it works all of the time. All of the time. If people knew this, they would never be asking God questions. Obedience goes has a high rating of any believer who is given to understanding the performance, you know, of, 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 of obedience. Look at what the Bible says. In the book of 1 Samuel 15, verse 22. 1 Samuel 15, 22. And Samuel said, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? So he delights. That's what Samuel is saying. He delights much more in obedience than in sacrifices. He loves it. He delights. God himself. If you want to look at the character, the nature of God, his business, he delights. He delights in you obeying his instructions. More than coming along and saying, hey, Lord, I, I, I did not fast, I did not come along, hey, I did not, but I brought you one million dollars. There are few occurrences that you can see in lives, in ministry, in this and the other, and you begin to realize, yeah, they are great in this. But when it comes to this particular obedience, they will not follow it. So they are suffering this thing. Now look at it. For it says, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than to the fat of rams. For rebellion is a sin of the witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Can you imagine? And sometimes we People who don't know the Bible and they don't care about how God looks at things. You know, there are people who don't know and don't care how God looks at the things they do. He said, look, being stubborn. Hey, you, today they complain about this. It doesn't move you. Tomorrow they say that. It doesn't move you. You are stubborn. Bible say, at that level, God looks at you as a man worshipping idols. Why are you addicted at disturbing the peace of mind of the people that are meant to have enjoyed to enjoy your fellowship and your presence. Why? God says it so clearly. They are stubborn children. They are stubborn wives. They are stubborn husbands. 
They are stubborn parents. They are stubborn people. They are stubborn workers. He says, uh-uh. Obedience is what makes God delightsome. He delights. You can be sure. When God delights in something, my friend. You know, there are things in the scripture that we need to, God to help us understand. The Bible's sense of obedience. Did you know that obedience is superior to prayer? Obedience. Ah, far much above prayer. <laughs> in fact, when you obey God, you shorten your prayer in that area. When you obey God. When you obey God. That is why you see people in the Bible. A number of them. There's nothing the Holy Ghost has hidden. From Abraham. About Abraham's prayer life. About Daniel's prayer life. This is what he prayed for. We are told. When Daniel is praying. It's recorded. And when he's not praying. It's also recorded. But look at. When you look at the quality of their obedience. Abraham's strong point in life. Is obedience. And it's not only him. Go say now. Come here. Come here. You guys. You that claim to be Abraham's own seed. You that claim to be connected with Abraham in whichever case. By faith or by biological this thing. He says follow in his footsteps. Why did God say that? He delights in obedience. The kind that Abraham has. Number three or number four you should realize. Most times divine instructions are contradictory to human sense. If you look at the Bible... And believed it. You will change the way you look at things and especially God. Many persons, they are believers. What makes you a believer? It's your obedience that qualifies you to be a believer. And the quality of your believing is determined by the quality and commitment to obedience. Obedience. Now, at 75. The Bible says Abraham was old at 99. So, you can't say, you know, those years they were living long. Even at 75, the man is old anyway. He's old. He's not a young boy. He's by any definition. A few years down the line, they were not even sleeping together with the wife. He's not a young man. They were not interested. They were doing it for the fulfillment of God's word. And Ego tells him, leave your father's house. And I want to submit, Abraham was not as poor as we think. No, 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 no. He has people he collected from Haran. They were people, the Bible says, he left with the people. Maybe let me read that one. He left with the people he had collected from Haran. So he, was not a, he had some cattle, that guy, and some possession. The issue there was not poverty, as a matter of fact. We always want to amplify it, to look like, you know, God made him richer, but the man was not poor. Okay. Look at chapter 12, verse 5 of Genesis. The Bible says, Genesis chapter 12, verse 5 says, And Abraham took Sarai his wife, and Lot his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered. So they had some substance worth recording in the scripture. <laughs> Amen? Glory to God. That they had gathered, and the souls they had gotten in Haran. So they had souls. They had a household. This thing that is so modern today, People want to don't want to have to stay with other people in their family set up. It is our own. But in the culture of people that were blessed and were contributing blessed, they, they, in that kind of thing was a culture. Having some people who value your wealth and they can be partakers of the progression of your wealth. They, are, they have their disadvantages, but when they come along with you, they see you as the king over them and they have no problem with it. And they want to be under the canopy of your leadership. And, they, and they're not your tribes people. It was a, a culture at that time. So that suffering can end. They, they were like his children. And the Bible says, they had got it from Aaron. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan. And into the land of Canaan, they came. It is obedience. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah 48, verse 17, I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who teaches you to a prophet and leads you in the way you should go. Leads you. He cannot lead you by force. 
In chapter 6, God said, I will never struggle, strive for a man on what to do. No. He gave up on that. And from then after that, it is you now. He leaves you as much as you are willing to follow. He leaves you as much as you are willing to obey. As much as you are willing to obey. Obedience is not God's side. It's your side. Amen? Hallelujah. Mm. The benefits of obedience are more than we can describe this morning, but it's good to remind ourselves. To come out of situations, you will discover that God will tell you things that don't make sense to the human sense. And who told you that human sense is all there is for us to depend on? I've said several times, God created man with five senses, but never intended man to depend on them. God intended man to depend on divine direction by his word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of the Lord. So there's a place for food we don't deny. He didn't say man shall live on the word alone. No, he said there's a place for your senses. You need to see you're a human being. You need to feel you're a human being. You need to smell you're a human being. You need this time for smelling. There's time for testing. When you're going to eat food, when you're going to have good meal, I don't want, I don't like a lot of salt by reason of wisdom of age. I don't like it. So I have to test and know whether this one is tolerable or not tolerable. I, I, I have to take some tea. And this is good now. My senses are required. My ears can't hear. But there are things my ears are not meant to hear. There are things my eyes are not meant to see. There are things that my nose is not meant to smell. There are things my body is not meant to whatever. Some things are such that God, will see, God made them. But God will answer you to know right now. I have a few things around my life. Even my phone. I'm not using it now. I can't call. Uh, you know. There's time for calling. There's time for using my car. I'm not driving my car now. I'm on the altar. So there's, you need to have wisdom to know what to use my time. And the word of God is so necessary for your blessing, breakthrough, and everything you're looking for. The instructions were move forward to come out of this mess. Israel must go to the Red Sea. And I told you before, the Red Sea was, was not meant for Israel. No, it was not a big miracle per se. The only benefit they have is obedience. They obey to go through this new thing. Yet it is a trap for Pharaoh and his army. God cannot, doesn't want to kill them through the other way. He wants to kill them through the water. So they think they can still make it. Now, the Bible will tell you so many things about obedience. Whereas prayer fulfills the promises of God, obedience brings you into a covenant, commits God. You are the one praying for God to do things. You are praying for God to do things. And you are asking, Lord, you promise, you promise. I have promised for things. But as I come to change, so I say, well, you know, uh, we had a 14-day prayer and fasting. So I was not able to come and see you until that time was. And it is legal. It's acceptable. But if I've committed certain things, say, well, come rain, come sunshine, I'll do it for you. So now it, there's nothing like prayer and fasting season. I have committed myself with such kind of serious commitment. I must do it. I must do it. There are some promises in life, and there are so many commitments also in life. God has promises that we pray for. God, fulfill your promise in my life. I know the one who say, you say this, you say this. And he's checking a few things here and there. But when you obey the instruction, you commit his performance. Amen? Yes. Obedience commits God. Obedience. Obedience. Time will not be allowed us to say much of this, but look at it. It's still good time all the same. Look at this. Look at this. Jesus goes to Cana of Galilee. And there they ask him to perform a miracle. And he's like this and the other. But Mary has already preached the highest, the best message ever. Whatsoever he tells you to do, do it. Do it. Do it. If you do it, this shame, this one that is almost being shameful, will become an honorable thing. And what does he ask them? Very unreasonable thing. 
It has no sense, common sense, wisdom, this. And that's where many Christians are stagnated, troubled, in having no miracle and wondering whether God, because they want to reason it out with God. Say, so God, you, you, can't you understand? Even people will be seeing us. How will, what will they say, Pastor John? How can people, what will people say? That pa Papa Basiki has come here. And we are saying, go, there's no water, they didn't buy. Go and take water that is, we, we didn't say it is even bad water. It came from the tap. But what is in your mind? To say you take that water and bring it to the table where pastors are sitting to take a partner, a partner. Suppose somebody saw you, they will never come to this church again. You guys, you don't want, why do you want to do that kind of thing? Reasoning, that's human reason. But when God says it, suspend common sense. Engage divine sense. And divine sense says, whatsoever it has to do, do what do you want? Do you want shame or do you want honor? Choose. You go and argue, 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 argue. The enemy of many people, most of us, is we have glorified our intellectual wisdom and sense. Our common sense has taken place to where God's sense is meant to be. And so we miss out. We miss out. We miss out. And they, did, they, they didn't ask one question in that scripture, chapter 2, by, of, of John, John chapter 2. They didn't ask. They went quickly, took the water there, and in fact, they didn't pray. That's why obedience is superior to prayer. Jesus is so powerful, he's not even praying. I wish, you know, you remember how this problem was with the man. Don't blame the man. We would have worse problem than the man. Don't blame the man. Some of us will say, hey, with these cults in town, I think uh, Elisha has introduced a new cult. You dip yourself in water. What is in water? Which scripture talks about dipping yourself in water? As at that time. As at that time. Which scripture is it that says, dip yourself seven times in the river? So that it will be cult. We will easily pass for cult. People without the Holy Ghost, without discernment, without sense of God. People who are full of themselves, who are disobedient, rebellious, all kind of things that the Bible talks about. Many of us are not, are not moving forward. And we may never move at all forever until and unless we come to a point to realize that Bible sense is to superior to human sense. And they obeyed. And the water was turned to wine at the table. No prayer. All these long prayers we make, if we obeyed God, will not be praying. Father, bless me financially. Bless me materially. Bless me this and bless me that. Can become, thank you Jesus for the blessing you have given me. I give you glory and honor for the supplies, for the provision, for the help you have given me. If only we obeyed. If only we obeyed. I am not the first pastor. Not pastor is not a good word. I am not the first person on the earth to call for an offering for the sake of building the things that matter King God. God himself in the wilderness. He said, oh, you guys have been celebrating the gold rings and the gold this thing and everything around. Now, Moses, collect an offering to build me a tabernacle. And there was instruction from those, only those who are willing. Only those who are willing. And I believe God, I will live to see that happen in believer faithfulness. They gave, they gave, they gave. Until they say, hey, 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 hey. Three million, sir, is, is, is okay now. You told you said you had three million. Now it is enough. Don't bring any more. Anybody who is doing that, you can plan for another time. Maybe for another program. This one for three million, 2023, Liver Faith Conversion, is, is already fine. It's already full. Everything's in order. The ties are here. The instruments are also there. The signages are in all of their places. And, and the food for the guests is there. And just for take our people from Rongo, uh, Kamkoyua, and Busia, and, and wherever is okay. And the food for the guests from Uganda is all settled. We give glory to God. I believe I will see that in my life. They obeyed, sir. Now listen. When you obey, you enter into a covenant. Did you know that the present day Israel, Jews, they don't even know it. When they were, their fathers were pleasing God in giving for his kingdom advancement, 
they, their fathers entered into a covenant of prosperity. They will never lack. Their children's children forever will never lack. Why? That obedience brought in prayerless. No need for prayer, prosperity. They don't even know it. They don't believe in Christ. But the covenant through obedience of their fathers is working to the advantage to this day. Don't just pray for your children. Lord, I pray my children will be walking in the fear of God. I pray that my children will be blessed of God. They will minister to the Lord. They will serve God. They will be good mannered. They will be good behaved, behaved children. Uh -uh. Do what the Jews did. Build this house and commit God to bless your children. Father, as I give this offering for believer faith conversion, 2023, Lord, let it be that none of my seed after me will ever beg bread, will ever lose a job, will ever have, go through shortages and all kind of, of lack of want in their life, but establish them in prosperity, in goodness, in mercy, in help, in blessings, in the name of Jesus. And poor David has said, I was young and now I'm old. I've never seen the son of a righteous man begging bread. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their children begging bread. A righteous man is who? A righteous man is a man who does things that are right according to God's instruction. You cannot qualify for righteousness when you are a disobedient family. No. Your obedience qualifies you for righteousness. Your obedience qualifies you for your righteousness. The Bible says concerning Abraham, that when he obeyed God, it was counted for him as righteousness. Doing things right according to God. Not right according to you. That you are doing what is right, does not mean it is God's right. No. There's a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end thereof is what? It's destruction. And there's a way also that seemeth funny to a man. But God is in it. As long as God is in it, it doesn't matter how funny it looks. Isaac, the other day we saw the widow of Sarah Zarephath. She was told, listen, hey, madam, go and bring me some water. I'm tired. I'm, I'm sure, or I guess, if, uh, Elijah thought, God has said, I have prepared a widow woman in Sidon of Zarephath to, to, to actually says, I've commanded her to sustain you. Where? She sound, it sounds to me like she's the like a Shunammite woman. I've commanded her. When he goes, he's in a hurry, Bwana. So he goes. And what does he mean? A woman is saying, we have only one meal to eat and then die. Both Elijah and the woman are men, a woman and man of faith, obeying God wholeheartedly. Elijah did not question God. Ah, will say my age. Say ngene bwana. Sing me fanya vizuri. You don't, you don't support me. I don't know. Have you ever got there before? You, I want to ask God. I used to ask those things a long time ago. I no longer ask them. Lord, you mean you can't see what I'm doing? How much I'm trying? I'm human, God. You should also understand. You should also understand. Ah, it's not necessary. It doesn't make you any better. It's not humility. No. It's foolishness. Elijah did not doubt God. He said, you are the one. So go and bring me water, madam. As I rest from this running that I have been running, as I rest, bring me some water. Oh, while she was going, taka take it, taka take it, taka take it. Ah, madam, come. Don't just bring, I don't want you to go many trips. <laughs> so don't just bring water. Bring also for, say, ah, ah, sir. Water, yes. Food, no. Why? We only have a meal for today and then we die. There's nothing. Everybody knows what's You know what's happened in the land. Say, no, bring me fast. And there was no argument. Why are we arguing? And he said, Old Testament people. Ne, 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 ne. What, where did they collect this faith? I have, a, I have a feeling. The most biggest act, I mean, enemy of believing and obedience is a bad heart. So bad. We ever look for God because we needed him like a supermarket. 
We are always looking for how can I gain? How, the way the world is operating is the way people come in the house of God. What will I gain? What will I, when I tithe God, what will I gain? When I give God, what will I gain? We are in business. We are in the house of God doing mechanize. What? What? There's no room for loving God. Nothing. Nothing. You know how they crucified Jesus? It's, uh, even before cru they crucified him, they, for, after he has fed 5,000 people, the following day people were gathering, and the Holy Ghost showed him and he said, you guys, I know you have not come here to hear the word of God. You have come because of the bread that was served the other day. When we try to speak like Jesus, they say, uh -uh. they want us to be one kind. When we speak like him, they say, Pastor, you are, you, are, you are a bit rude, you know. Yeah, you are a bit rude. Have you ever read, uh, have you ever read the Bible? You have never read the Bible? Jesus told them on their face, I know why you are here. <laughs> you are here because of the, the miracle of the bread. You are here because of the miracle of the bread. I know you. You think I don't know you. Shut. He left him. And he asked even his very close man. He said, why are you still here? You go. People are not serious. I've taught you the word. You are not keen. You are only interested in, in seeing things for yourselves. And he said, Peter said, where else can we go? And yet you are the one with the words of eternal life. So Peter, Peter he was not elevated to become senior over them. By default, he has a wrong head. Sometimes he says things that are out of order. But his heart of hearts, he loves Jesus. Genuinely. Proven by those statements. We are looking for eternal life, sir. If we go, where will we go to? And you are the one with the words of eternal life. That's what they chose him. And the guys are quiet. Say, what do people say about me? People are just, uh, you are a miracle worker. You are like one of them. They, they were everywhere. But Peter said, you are Jesus the Christ, the anointed one, son of God. And so beloved, let us delve into fight carnality. That's the meaning. You cannot obey God when you are carnal. Fight the five cents. This is the cabin for, cabin for doubting God. The, it doesn't make sense. And you have become foolish to believe your own head in the face of God whom you don't see. Doubt your doubt, somebody said. Doubt your own doubts. And you will please God. And you will succeed. Everywhere. I told you, if you ever try to go in a journey in the Bible, ah, you will know you, that your, your mind is becoming stupid and foolish and an enemy to God and your own enemy. That's what the Bible says. A carnal-minded man is an enemy of God. It's an enmity with God and can never agree. So you must overrule, that's the word. You must overrule your five senses when you're going to obey God. You must overrule your five senses. If you're going to move out of that crisis, that sickness, eh, let's get some money to go to India. We didn't refuse to go to America for treatment. But while you're going there, remember, healing is in faith. Obeying God's word. You will not walk out of your mess beyond your commitment to obey God. It's not easy. There are so many examples in the Bible. There was nothing reasonable about the widow as Zarephath. There was nothing reasonable about the water in Can of Galilee. There was nothing. There's no logic there. There's no logic. Even tell somebody, rise up and walk. There's no shaking, there's no prayer. Rise up and walk. Agabus. Why? When you ask questions, you end up in disobedience most times. And God leaves you alone. And so you don't move forward. So you crash literally. But he comes to church. He comes to church, he prays and fasts, but he has held an idol of his own mind. He has become a captive of his own ways. His ways are higher than the ways of God. So, what should God do? Amen. I am speaking the voice of God on behalf of many people and to many people this day. Yes. There is believer faith convention coming. And people say, people say, I'm a son of this commission. Look at what you wrote. I've not checked it yet, but I know. Look at what you self wrote. Is, is that the sacrifice to a God. You have given people a lot of money. Ah, 
the other wedding, funeral, your name you wrote, look at how much you wrote there. The funeral, the burial. People you don't know, let them know that, uh, you know, uh, I'm, a, I'm a big man. Let them know. But to God, no. God understands that uh, this is the much I can give you. Those people don't even know how much you earn. They don't know how much you earn. And you want to prove to them. You are borrowing to prove to your friends whom you went to school together that you, cannot, you are also somewhere in life. They should not just think you are just like this, like that. But to God, God should understand. That is what has made so many people stuck asking stupid questions. You sing five. They can pretend to be so engrossed in the things of God, but they will never be. Bible says, do not be hearers only, but be doers of the word. Doing makes prayer easier and shorter. Hearing only, the Bible says, when you only hear and you don't do, you can define yourself by any kind of definition. You can even smile sheepishly. You can say, yeah, pastor, you know, everybody has weakness. But the Bible says, you are a fool. Jesus said it. In the book of Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. And 20 to 27. Say, There's one who hears my word. I shall liken him to a wise man. It's the same as saying, he's a wise man. If I liken you to a wise man, you are wise. If I liken you to a fool, you are foolish. Say, those who hear and hear and hear. There is believer faith convention. Everybody should give their best. Invite people to come to church. Do this and the other. And they say, we just have had. We just have had. Bring somebody to church on Sunday. We just have had. We have had. Yes, sir. Who is here ready to commit himself for Sunday? I will come with three people or even one only. Everybody, foolish men and women, who also believe in the hands. On Sunday, I forgot, sir. I forgot. I forgot. You are a fool. And God is noting your foolishness and say, this kind of foolishness is leading to destruction. So you cannot escape. Amen? The destruction that is coming. You can't escape the losses, the setbacks. And you'll be telling people how, you know we've been in church for a long time. This thing is not, when people have gone into some, some experience of their own failings, they want to blame God and blame the church. So we have been here. We have not seen anything. What about us who have also been here and have seen people who obeyed God and have made great progress? Who should we listen to, you or us? Obedience will take you out of the mess. And I've told you and you should know, it doesn't make sense. Many times. Check your Bible. 75 for what? The man should be blessed at home. <laughs> I mean. So, uh, many people say, God, like I, I say, on my own, I don't want to go and live in Nairobi. No. No. On my own, I don't want to go to America and live there. No. But if God leads me there, I will go. If he leads me there, I will go. If he says I go back to my village today, I will also go. I didn't want to come to take up by any means. But God said, this is the place. So I obeyed. And I've seen God in great measure. Why do I shout over every devil in the land? Because I obeyed God. And he went before me, he's with me, and works for me. Amen. Obedience will take you out of every mess. Obey. Amen. Now, finally, finally. Obedience works with a good heart. And a good heart is a product of humility. Be humble. Be humble. Be humble. Don't wait for God to humble you. Be humble. It's in humility that you can obey effectively. It's effective obedience that turns you into a wonder among men. It's, it's effective. Obedience. This thing we call, uh, not obedience. Humility. Leads to obedience. Obedience is what makes you become a wonder among men. Glory to God in the eyes. You can read Philippians chapter 5, five chapter 2, verse 5 to 9, and see what obedience can do. Amen? It's something that somebody needs to say, Lord. I have gone so much in my own wisdom, my own counsel, thinking you have thought and thought and you have lost and lost. Can't you sit down now and change your own ways? So let me try the word of God now. Peter said, ah, we have told you the whole night. And you should know that Peter is a fisherman. Jesus is a carpenter. And possibly Peter has ever had maybe. 
The man is a carpenter. What can carpenter tell, fisherman? What does he know about fishing? And the man is doing what he knows best. And just told him, launch the deep. May you be like Peter. The journey of obedience that leads to the manifestation of the blessing of God begins with saying like Peter, nevertheless, I have five senses. I have gone to school. I have tried my own ways. I know this is not what it's supposed to be. But at your word, I will do what you say. That is reasonable reasoning. We have tried medical science. We have done what we should have done. Now that the thing is not answering medically, we are going to do it spiritually. Obey instruction. Amen? Yes. I've seen it several times in my life. When I realized that many people I pass are being offended or, or branding me a champion, you know, there's a way that people now, instead of following or taking an example, they ex exclude you and say, this, uh, it's only Pastor Rengo who can have that kind of testimony. So I stopped. But the truth of the matter is, when we were doing this house of God, seven years ago, and God gave me the first landed land, one acre in Kabat, a good place. I felt, yes, the time, the time to build my house has come. I think I began to see myself. We are building God's church, so God is also building my house. He said, give that land. And we sold it. And we gave God that money. Almost 75% of that money came here. Direct Pastor George can be my witness. So when you hear my testimony, somebody who gave me land in Bongoma, a good place. Somebody gave me two acres in Muranga. Don't fight. What are they using? You are using obedience. You are using obedience. I was feeling good about sacrifice. I was taught very well by Bishop Edepo while in Winner's Chapel. The power of sacrifice every end of the year. I will do it during the Shiloh meetings. And so I said this time around, I want to intimidate God and wipe away all my account. Uh, God knew I was lying. He knew I was lying. There was another money coming. There was another money that was coming. I was waiting for it. So I said, this one, I've at least cleaned the, the account. There was a little money inside. I said, yeah, the, the feeling of cleaning an account. God said, this one, this one. This one, I was a wise man. I said, Shambak is going to form one. So let me prepare for him. But this one is the account. Let me clean. This one was much more. So he said, this one, this one. The one that is more, the one that's coming. And it came. Came. And when it came, I, I, I tried to argue Kidogo. I said, God, you know, you understand. Child is going to school. I don't want to struggle in January. Blah, blah, blah. It was in December. So I gave it all. What is the matter? After I argued, I, argued, I felt that. When I felt I had argued enough, I said, Yeah, that is what makes it a sacrifice. The way I'm feeling like this, like that, that is what now makes it a good. Oh, so it's pinching here. That is what makes it a good sacrifice. So I released it to God. And then God will ask God to have it. One miracle happened. The school we wanted Shambak to go to was Butula in Busia. He had been called in Dagoretti in Nairobi, and we didn't want it. And so the favor I got was number one, the school. Shortly after that, we were having a pastor's meeting in Nairobi. So I came from Bungoma, I came to Nairobi, and we were having a good time, and we finished. So I was going back. While going back, one of my sons says, sir, we want to go to Nairobi to Kakamega uh, in, by, by air. This much is here for your air ticket. I told him, sir, no, I am a wise man. Thank you for this much, and please, thank you. I want to go with my brothers. And so he gave me the money. Interestingly, I didn't check the amount. No, he gave me that. I said, this is your prophet offering, sir. Please accept this offering. And he, gave, he gave, sent somebody to bring it to me. Ah, he gave me the money. I put another side of my pocket. Uh-huh. So, I uh, want two people here will be greeting me, blessing me, greeting me, blessing me, greeting me, blessing me. So, I left. I don't know how that happened. But I didn't count that money till I hit Bungoma. By the time I was in my bedroom, checking the money, it was far much more than I gave God and far much more than the school fees they needed. So, I pay school fees with ease. 
paying, buying books, everything. Like a king, I'm paid. For obeying God, for obeying God. I say, yeah, 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 yeah. This is nice. This is nice. This is nice. Pastor George is not dead. He's alive here with us. Ask him. In fact, he's the one who Pastor Koin Kakamega told. They burned the Pastor Winner Chapel Kakamega, a very close friend of mine, Pastor David Coin. And then Pastor George had gone home. I went to that church. I met them. And he told him how we were doing. The way that somebody asked, how is my brother doing Tika? Say he's doing well. In fact, he has two cars. He has RAV4 and he has a VX Land Cruiser. I said, go and tell him to give me one car. My own day burnt. Pastor Jude. I said, when he told me, I said, ah, they burnt his car. Hey, that's very bad. Pastor Koin did not need to ask me. I, I'm the one who called him. I said, oh God, how will be it now? I said, it is well, sir. Uh, Pastor George told me this. Yeah. Oh, God, now this and the other. They will call ourselves. I told him, come and collect. There's one or two or three things need to be done in this car. He came and collect the car. With no pressure. You know, Father, what are you saying? Should I give? Should I not give? Pa ask Pastor George. He's the one who told me about Pastor Coin. He said, you should give him one car. He, Pastor George told me. And I did. I did again. It was my spirit says. This is what the Bible says. Should be done. And I, so this prompt obedience. So when you see me have car, drive car, and I'm not selling anything or buying anything or using church money to get cars, I, I understand that obedience will bring God in your life in such a way that it's not ordinary. It is not reasonable, yes? Two cars, one consumes more fuel than the other one. I think it should be easier to have two. And how would you just give a car like that? No, 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 no. I had in my spirit, do it. Promptly. Obedience will take you out of a mess and messes. There's no way you're going to take a wake up from me. We were with Pastor George again. When I sold the van and the money that we received, we gave to God. I sold my Mercedes Benz and 70% of that money I gave to God. This commission here. Not that I was giving to God and then, you know, people can say, Pastor, so you're going to sign the check and take back the money? No! There's a clear separation between my money and church money. Even the one I use, I use as an officer of this commission. It has saved my soul. It has helped me. Amen? Obedience. Nobody wants anybody's thing. It is for your good. When you don't obey, God leaves you alone. Okay, struggle your own way. And many have been destroyed. They say, the man had refused. Do you know what the Bible says in the book of... Uh, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24 and 20, 25. He said, there is he that scattereth, gives, and ends up in blessings. But there's one that gathers more than enough and yet tends to poverty. You know what brings to poverty? He disobeys the element of giving. He disobeys the instruction of God to give for kingdom advancement. So when the wind will blow, my friend, to catch up with them. Obedience brings you into a place that God is so committed to perform his work. Disobedience removes God from your business and leaves you alone to deal with it. Now that you want God to understand that you, should, you cannot tithe, cannot give. This sacrifice they are talking about, they want to feed on themselves they, to eat your money. Don't give anything. You know something? I, I pray. And we're going to pray now, now. And I pray good. But I one thing that has delivered my life. A long time ago, I will be praying for people they will be having problems. The more. I said, ah, God, how can we pray? I said, no. God help me to understand. He answers prayer. And he looks at your heart and your life before you answer the prayer. So I have no business. Mine is to obey the instruction and to pray the way you ought to pray. Answering and what happens to your life is between you and God. How you live with him, how you obey him. He said, this is what... Pray for headache. I pray for headache. If you are hiding other things around you or reasons that I do not know and you don't want them exposed or God has not told me about them, congratulations. Obedience is a master key in the, in the school of success in the journey of life. In fact, Bishop Ede Bototas, and I believe him for it, God will not even give you a new instruction where the previous one has not been obeyed. 
Say, God, show me. God, tell me. God, do this for me. Direct my steps. Order my life. Teach me. Show me. Which one? The one we told you first, you've refused. Who, are, who do you think you are? There are some people who, uh, by reason of gross foolishness, they vowed to God. Lord, in the Believer Faith Confession, 2022, uh, this is what we want to give you. They even collected cards and went and got money and never gave to God. They are not punishing anybody. The Believer Faith Confession, 2022, is history now. This one is going to be better by every definition. Don't you know God in this house? So now, you are not punishing the church. For not your giving cannot stop nothing. Even if all of us will not stop, you'll be so shocked. Go can send one check. One check, I know him. One check, I know God. The God of Believer Faith Embassy, I trust him. One check. When he wants to do something in this house, he does not consult people. One check. One check. From one person that we do not know. And the conversion will be moving. Every opportunity to give is an opportunity to obey God's instruction to make you richer. To make you richer. To bring people to church. To obey that instruction makes you blessed. I say, no, I don't know how to bring people to church. But you know how to cheer Arsenal and Manchester and to write memes and to read them day in, day out. That's you obey your heart. You don't obey God. God cannot be the one blessing you when you not obey him. No matter how much we are going to pray, we must understand this place of obedience. Don't tell God if he's the God of heaven. If he catches you, saying you, you also understand. I don't know how to bring people to church. You, don't, you, you know I also, you, you know I also understand. I've never led anybody to Christ. Now that you have not led anybody to Christ and it looks awkward to you, do that awkward thing. Do that inconvenient thing. And see what God will do in your life. Who will bring people to church here that will not see God manifest in their lives? No. We taught yesterday, invest in people. Obey this instruction of investing in people and begin to see uncommon blessings. We don't share testimony here for fun. We share testimony here to build our capacity in faith and believe in God. That lady, Monica, is still doing exploits with the mantle that I gave her. She, she, she laughs at the devil. And she, the workers are, are afraid when they see the mantle. That it works like magic for them. Say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please don't take it out. Because we'll be so tired of the customers that are coming in. And she's growing. Resources, finances. And you're in the house and obeying is like, ah, pastor, sometimes you are very hard on us. No. I tell you the truth that God has communicated to my heart to tell you. Moving forward in your life, you must understand and practice obedience without which you'll be praying and telling stories you know you know we are praying 14 days you'll be counting i was there for the one for three days i was there for the one for seven days i'm even in this one of 14 days without obedience prayer is a waste you obey fast then you pray that's how it works you obey fast then you pray then you shall be effective you obey fast then you pray then the thing will be effective you obey fast you see Jesus and God in the Old Testament? They don't question. When Paul, Peter is the one saying many statements, you know, you know, we toy with... Uh, he never told him the second thing. Do you remember Elisha? He didn't argue with, with the, uh, Naaman. Naaman, you know, Naaman, Naaman. Naaman, obey, submit. Ah, ah. It is us preachers who, are, who speak your language that are now telling you how God deals with people who disobey. How long do you want to stay in your mess anyway? With the reasoning that has never helped you before. Do you think it's now going to change? It can't change. You'll be reasoning and say, yeah, you know me, I do things that. You are doing things has made you a mediocre. An embarrassment to everybody around you. It is time to say no to everything contradicting. Did you not say in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse, verse 2, 3, 5, there about. It says that our business is to wrestle against every thought that is contrary. Imagine thoughts. Your biggest problem is not the devil. Thoughts, thoughts that are contrary to the word of God. Contradicting. They are becoming higher. Telling God, God, you understand, I can't give an offering. I don't have anything. I cannot pray. I cannot fast. God, you know something? I cannot bring anybody to church. I've never brought anybody. And it should not be a problem to you, God. You should also understand. That kind of demonic thought. You bind and say, no. I resist in the name of Jesus. I'll be bringing people to church from today. Lord, show me who can come to church along with me on Sunday. Lord, show me how to, to lead someone to Christ. Show me how to do it, oh God. Show me which way to go. 
to make my heart committedly obedient. Those things will never be reasonable. God has not changed. How do you take Jesus to the wilderness and you say you are leading him? He should even be saying, no, I'm not going to the wilderness, sir. I was born in a manger. I've been a carpenter. People have laughed at me. And then I go now go to the... And my time on earth is so short. Why should I go to the wilderness? All that kind of reasoning will not take you anywhere. That kind of good quality analysis. You know, we analyze with our mind. Yeah, you see this, and you see that, and you see that. No, 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 no. no. Not on the things of God. Even if they look alike. Even they look reasonable. They are never reasonable. They are above reasoning. So the Bible says, the Holy Ghost led him in the wilderness. And what did he come up with? It is in the wilderness that he was prepared to become famous. The entire ministry of Jesus hangs on his obedience to the wilderness experience. When he led them, he didn't lead them to the shortcut of 11 days. 40 years. Amen. When you meet these guys, they are cooked. They are loaded. You can change your life overnight just by saying, Lord, I surrender to obeying you now. I want... I'm hungry for what instruction God is giving me. And the beautiful thing about God, he, you don't need to hear the spirit before you hear the word. You hear the word first, you obey what is in the word, then you graduate now to spirit. Holy Ghost show me revelation. Which one? The physical, the scripture you have not obeyed. Which spirit are you talking about? You are obedient to the word of God. It's what gives rise to the influence and the operation of the Holy Ghost. The word of God first, Jesus came before the Holy Ghost came. So the word comes first before the Holy Ghost revelation comes. So if you are saying, ah, that one, no. I'm looking for a higher one, for a greater one. O Old Testament is very old. New Testament, I don't understand. Hey, me, I want the Holy Ghost to help me now. Which Holy Ghost? Which one? Which one? Is it the Bible? No, 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 no. Beloved, we can all change situations of our lives. We can come out of that rock and hard place business by just looking for instructions by the word of God. Which way to go? Which way to go? Which way to go? When Paul the apostle is called as anointed as he is, he went into Arabian desert for, for three years. All this anointing on Paul did not come in comfort preaching. All these things. And that we all want comfort, there's comfort. Yeah, 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 yeah. Distinction, favor, comfort. You have mistaken it if you don't understand the obedience. God will tell you things you wonder. What, what are you saying? Ah, uh, what are you saying, Lord? It is true, I'll finally obey, but I, I, I'll help me understand. He may not talk to you, but if you obey, you will see things you've never imagined possible. Like never before. This month is your month to move forward like never before. It also means you need to obey God like never before. Obey him like never before. Don't obey your mind. There is nothing in the mind that was helping Abraham. There was nothing necessary. There was, when you say, kill your son. But reason says, I've been waiting all the days of my life. What are you telling me? I've been waiting all these days. What are you telling me? You can cry and scheme and cry. God will not be moved. He is the almighty God. <laughs> he knows the beginning from the end. He knows if you obey, your end is great already. Say, ah, the man now receives blessing. And Abraham has known already. He said, ah, this one? Okay. Collect firewood quickly, guys. Help me carry the, the biggest firewood, the one that burns quickly with power. Collect. Let's go. The boy asked me, Daddy, we know we do sacrifices. Okay, no problem. You say we shall go and do it. Now, the whole idea is this. Which one? Say, don't mind. God will provide for himself. The young man. And I do, there's no logic. How will you tell yourself with this stupid thing of today? You know, the boy was traumatized. The father tried to do things that were not good, even though they were in the church. This church business is not good. The boy is now messed up. The father, the own father carried a knife in the thing, this thing. You know, it really affected his mind. Which one? Those are demons that are raised on the altar of disobedience and rebellion. It's never about God. Why has Isaac ever accused his father? Daddy, what did you do for me when I was young? What, 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 what happened? Why? Oh, we have not had a lot of Isaac speaking in tongues and hearing God. And, but a good heart will soon be empowered to, to understand things. All this reasoning is stupid. It's the reason why you are still down. All this reasoning. All this reasoning. Today you are thinking about going this way. Tomorrow you think about going this way. Why have you not settled with what is God saying? What is God saying? What is he saying? What is God saying? Not necessarily that I'm your God the Father. I'm saying go to take her and begin to Make water your business. Not that one. What is the Bible says for I am? What is the word of God saying? Ask. Servants of God, ask. Ask pastors. Ask us. We show you with speed, with excitement. We know what he's saying about your life very thoroughly. We know. 
Now he, we, I know from heaven. Anybody in this church and anyone listening that will be committed to this, you will enter 2024 like it was never end times. <laughs> Amen. You will enter 2024 like it was your holiday. Believer faith conversion is a serious matter before God and before us here. It's going to be a turning point encounter for the commission. I'm telling you the truth and I lie not. I have heard from the master. 2024, we can, you cannot find us here. You cannot find us here. You can't find where we are this year. You will, you will look for us and find out, ah, what happened? What happened to Believer Faith Embassy? What, what happened? You won't find us here. You won't find our numbers here. Be part of it. Don't begin to celebrate other people. Say, yeah, celebrate people's testimonies. What are they doing? Celebrate your own testimony. We want to celebrate your own testimony. And we are telling instructions are here. Be part of the army of God. Praying and fasting all of the time for church growth, for increase. When the visitor, God of heaven, visit you, Shakopro Dolika Saka, Jesus said, and I finish. He said, There were two people, and I'm sure they're almost in the same time. That one build on the rock, another build on the sand. Both of them had opportunity. The thing was growing, and they said, Yeah, how are you, sir? Hey, building is expensive, and we are using the same material. And both of them were building. They are building, sir. You are building. One day, the other guy came and found, hey, the building of my friend has gone down. What happened? He built on disobedience. He built on selfishness. He built on reasoning. He built on his thoughts. I thought, I thought, you know, I, I didn't really know that it would be this serious. I, I don't understand. You're only paying tithe and giving offering and bring to church. To you, it is nothing. Jesus died for the people you are neglecting to bring to church. He died for them. So you cannot say, it's not a big matter, you know, I don't have the grace, you know. It's foolish grinning. He died for those people you look around and say, foolish man, this one will go to hell. The way they are smoking, choo, 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 choo. Uh, banging, smoking, drinking, fornicating, adultery, all nonsense around them and uh, let them go to hell. I'm going to church now. Huh? Huh? You don't know God. Obey the instruction. Look for the lost on a serious note. Pray for your father who's not born again, your mother, your siblings. Which wickedness entered you? That you, okay, you have refused to bring people to church. You are not even praying for your own mother, your own father, your own siblings, your own wife, your own husband to get born again, to know the truth. What kind of human being are you? Even your own reasoning, even this reasoning here. As you bring people to church, God will be meeting your own parents in the village. He will send another man like you. Favor for favor. Is to get concerned about people's business. Go to be concerned about your own businesses. There are things I don't pray for by the grace of God. And go keep doing them. Keep doing them. Keep doing them. I'm committed to pray for other people's needs. And God is also doing them for me. It is your commitment to his agenda that commits him to your own agenda. It's your, com his comm your commitment. People are teaching lies. The truth is, he is with me because I am committed to please him. It's a choice. What I've told you is, it's pure choice business. You choose which you like. Your destiny is in your hands. You obey, you make progress. You disobey, you suffer in this life. And you say, people, you look, you're looking for people to, to, to blame. You know, they don't like me. You know, God doesn't like me. Hey, somebody came to my office and I was rebuking that person. See what I talk about. I don't know why God doesn't like me. I don't know why God has allowed me to suffer like this. I don't know why. take it on us. Ah, leave my office. All that you tell me is what God has done against you. So what has the devil done? Seemingly God is very bad. How much good has Satan done in your life? Now that God is terrible. He has allowed you to suffer. He has allowed you at this age. You have not seen nothing. You, know, you are even breathing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, also I want to say God also. No. If it's God is good, it's just good. Not that it's good and bad at the same time. 